Hello and welcome to the video on VNX and ESA. We're going to start by logging into the vCenter Operations Manager. For this I'm just going to use the admin user and the admin password. So here when we log in we get the home screen. It has the EMC storage topology view. You can see that we have an existing NS480 in the environment. We also have the new next generation VNX 5800 that we purchased. You can see there are different tabs we can look around in the vCenter Operations Manager to give us more information about each system and what is in each system. In the top right parent resources box we'll notice we have some NFS mounts which are indicated by the slash and the mount name. On the EMC storage metrics tab you'll notice if you select a storage system you can then see the resources for that system in the bottom left and if you select something there you can get some metrics on the right. Next we'll take a look at the EMC VNX Overview tab. On this tab you can notice some things such as the CPU performance, you can see the fast cache performance, the pool capacity in the bottom left, and you can see the London file system performance on the right hand side. Those are the standard tabs that come up when you're looking into the storage systems with VNX. We're going to be sticking with the comparison tab here. I've created some metrics here to view the CPU percentage utilized on the NS480 data mover 2 as well as the NFS IOPS on that data mover and we can see the file systems that are mounted to that data mover down the bottom and these are all NFS file systems. With the next generation VNX 5800 we have a new feature to migrate file systems to the destination side from an existing system such as the NS480 so we'll go ahead and take a look at that. We're also going to see the changes of CPU and IOPS when we go ahead and move some of those file systems. We also will move the file systems into a VDM on that destination side just to help segregate things and to keep our projects file systems separate from our business unit file systems. Now we noticed the IOPS and CPU utilization were pretty high on the existing NS480 so we'll go ahead and move all those project file systems. So we'll open the VNX file migration tool. Clicking on the configure systems button will bring up the manage servers window. In here we'll make sure we have added the two systems we're going to migrate to and from. We'll check the interconnects and remote systems and we'll do this on both systems. And everything looks good so we'll go ahead and close this window. Next we'll click create migration tasks. We're going to select the file system migration. We'll notice the file migration wizard comes up and then we'll go ahead and just click next. We'll go ahead and enter a task name. We'll then select the source and destination systems as well as the interconnect. We'll go ahead and select our file system and then we'll go ahead and select a storage pool for the destination side. We'll also want to select that VDM on that destination side that we're moving all these project file systems into and then we'll go ahead and click next. We'll review the summary and then click finish. And now we see the task show up in the tasks pane. We'll go ahead and select task and we'll notice in the top right we can select begin migration. And we'll notice that there is a pop-up. As with any migration, moving all the data of a file system could take some time. So we recognize this and just hit OK. And we see here the progress changing. We can see additional information in the information pane on the right as the migration progresses. To speed up time, I've created the rest of the migration sessions needed. Now we notice everything is ready to complete. Selecting one of the tasks, we notice we can now complete slash cut over this migration session. We'll go ahead and see the pop-up about this may cause disruption, and we'll go ahead and click OK. One thing to note that when we have the NFS on VDMs going forward, if we're doing the migration of a VDM with NFS file systems only on it, that can be done online. So in the future, this is just helping us by moving all our NFS file systems from the data mover on the NS480 to the virtual data mover or VDM on the 5800. We'll see the state go to completing. Another nice feature about this tool is that once it's complete you can scroll down on the information and you can see the time it took to go ahead and complete and cut over this file system to the new system. This took 14 seconds in this case. To speed up time once again I have completed all the file systems. Once the migrations are complete you want to go ahead and make sure your applications are running on all those NFS file systems as they were before and everything is accessible. Pretty standard practice really. After migrating a file system you just want to make sure everything works on the new system. 
Now to the good stuff. So we'll bring back up ESA. We'll notice that on the NS480 system, we see the CPU went down to 31% instead of previously 50 that it was. The IOPS went from around 50,000 down to 31,000. So we would expect that 20% CPU and 19,000 or so IOPS to be on the next generation VNX 5800. But we notice that the CPU is only 12% and the NFS IOPS are around 35,000. So we're doing more IOPS with less CPU on the next-gen VNX system. Now this, as anybody can tell, is a great thing that we can take advantage of the new technology and everything going on in the new VNX and get more IOPS out of less CPU. And that is going to conclude this video on VNX and ESA. Thanks for watching.